Hey guys, this is KT and Mr. Quinn. Welcome back to our movie podcast. Today we will be covering the Disney movie Big Hero 6. And when did this movie come out? It came out in 2014. <laughs> oh god, that makes me feel old. I thought this movie came out a lot sooner than that. <laughs> right? <laughs> it feels a lot so... more recent to me. <laughs> It really does, but then, like, I thought about it, and I realized which store I was at when it came out, and I was mm. like, nope, that was yeah. definitely 2014. Well, it technically came out in January 2015, but it's a 2014 movie, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. If you know yeah. the film industry, January movies are movies that couldn't get released in the previous year. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's where movies go to die, which is weird why this was released in January. <laughs> Yeah, so it did come out in time for um, the 2015 award season, though, and it actually had quite a good showing, 58 nominations, 17 wins. Um, it won at the Academy Awards for Best Animated Feature. It was nominated for a Golden Globe for the same award. Um, and then the Annie Awards, it won Outstanding Achievement in Animated Effects. Um, and for those listening who don't know what the Annie Awards are, it's only for animated features um, and shorts. And then um, it had a few smaller awards and things like that. Um, it actually came out and hit some of the um, smaller circuits first like it, it had a limited release and then a bigger release um so it did get some 2014 awards as well so um oh including uh dallas fort worth film critics association it hmm. was nominated for best animated film hmm. and it won second place who, who beat it uh let me see. Is that, that be too easy to? Is it going to be too difficult to look up or? <laughs> no, it was beaten by the Lego Movie. Oh, uh, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, Lego yep. Movie is a really good movie. <laughs> that's so hundred like, percent fair. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm 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 down with those two being the the top two. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm good with that. So story wise, this movie is how long is it? It's an hour and 42 minutes, so it's about yeah. an hour 35, give or take, with the actual main, like, the actual movie itself. So, I mean, story-wise, this movie's fine. It's a pretty normal story. Like, it's a story you've seen a hundred times in a, in a weird way. It's like, basically, Kid is too smart, ends up, you know, realizing that maybe he should go to the nice school that his brother goes to because it's full of this really cool tech. Something mm -hmm. happens to the family member, you know, kid has to figure it out, and then there's this weird superhero thing tied into it, and then they have to defeat the big villain. So this yeah. movie is based off a comic book, very loosely based off, like, a very, like, like a 90s comic book. I know nothing about the comic, so... Neither I'm do not... I. Yeah, so we're, we're not gonna talk about the comic book. Like, if you know about the comic book, and you know about this movie, and you know the differences, I mean, I guess... Only the really hardcore fans will care enough about that, but I highly doubt a lot of people who watched this movie know about the comic. So you don't yeah. need to read that to know the story. Not at all. Because I think this um, is a prequel anyway, <laughs> in a weird way. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Um, I know the show that came out is much more tightly, like, clued in to the comic book. Oh, yeah. Um, but I haven't watched the show either. No, um, I forgot about that. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch that either. We uh, we may cover that at some point because it's something that I've been interested in. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we can but, do that. And I'm sure it's on Disney+. Plus. Um, I did not check. I can actually check right now. <laughs> all right. Cause I know, uh, I know Big Hero 6 is. I watched it through Movies Anywhere because I actually own it. Yeah. But, 
Um, so while you're looking up that, the pacing of the story is um, pretty consistent. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really feel rushed. Um, the last I'd say fifth of the movie. Um, the pacing does get a little bit fast. There's a lot of um, characters jumping to the right action or conclusion just to, to move the, the big fight scene forward. Yeah. Um, but you see that in a lot of fight scenes, whether it's animated or, um, or not. So I'm not too concerned with the the fight pacing um because that's just something that's really difficult to write the one thing <laughs> i would say about the fight scenes in this movie is the camera work in them is really solid like they're not mm -hmm. they're not like a lot of fight scenes in a lot of animated movies where the camera just kind of goes everywhere because it can they did a really good job of making sure every single angle they did counted on every single character so there's a lot of there's a lot better understanding of what is actually going on in the scene <laughs> Mm -hmm. which is really and they, annoying um, and a lot of movies that are really bad at it <laughs> they seem to subscribe to the Jackie Chan method of uh, fight choreography mm -hmm. um, yeah. which there's there's a really great video essay on it about um, uh, 60 frames of painting and basically you you add extra time to a hit so that the brain actually processes it. Um, and they've done that a lot in this film, which it's rare to see in Western cinematography in general, but especially rare to see in animation. So I really like that they, they have those solid lingering hits because they don't feel like they linger. They feel like they're an actual hit. Yeah. Um, but definitely anyone listening, go check out that video essay. It's fantastic. So, yeah, I can't sign into Disney Plus at the moment. Uh, so it looks like, yes, I, the Big Hero 6 um, series is on Disney Plus, and it's 41 episodes. It's pretty long. That is long. Yeah, and it like huh. just came out, though, which is interesting. Second season premiered. On um, oh yeah, and it's it's um it's confirmed for a third season, so yeah, oh, it's okay. still actually running. So that's that's interesting. I guess I guess we could give it the old college try and see if it makes it out of the 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 cursed third season hell. <laughs> yeah. And if not, we could just sit down and watch that and review it because most animated shows don't make it past the third or the fourth one because that's when they go into yeah. syndication and then the animated the company doesn't have to care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's 2D. Yeah, it's a 2D. Yeah, it's a 2D show. I like the style of it because huh. I was tempted to watch it. Like it doesn't. It still kind of looks like that. We we made we we know how to use Tomb Boom, so we made it in Tomb Boom because we only had a week <laughs> to make an episode. But it still looks pretty solid. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, like okay. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in watching it. If it's a good, if it has the same kind of energy and like I guess comedy that this that this movie had, it'll be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So okay, we can put that on the uh, the to do yeah. list. Yeah. Um, probably won't get to it for a while, but it's there. Yeah. Oh. So um. The, the there's a good you know ensemble cast here. Mm -hmm. There's of course Hero and Baymax, um, who are the stars of the film, um, and then you've got Wasabi, Honey Lemon, Gogo, and Fred in um, you know the the secondary character roles. Yeah, the like with... the nerdy high school kids that are like Tadashi's friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you've got, of course, the villain, um, who is, uh, their, their former professor. Spoilers, by the way. 
I feel like if people watching me or listening to these don't realize there are going to be spoilers, they deserve to be spoiled. Okay, fine. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, fine. (laughs) (laughs) This is like spoilers, by the way. It's like we're doing our our Doctor Who reviews. It's like, we're going to spoil it on a show that's 60 years old. Sorry. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, this movie's been out for a while. If the people who have seen it have seen it, except me, but it takes me ten years to watch a movie, and I already knew the story going in. So, <laughs> shrug. Yeah. I knew who the villain was, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> it, yeah. So that's one thing I'll say about the story. Um, I watched it like. I watched it in 2014 mm-hmm. before before it had gotten its big release. Um, and so I I was one of the first people who knew the spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of this is just me being a writer. Part of this is it's a kid's movie. I figured out who the villain was when the brother died. Oh, yeah. Even though I knew who it was, I was like, this is a kid's movie. I know who the bad guy is. It's it's already obvious. (laughs) I mean, there's only two people it could be, and it's not the obvious one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's... They they did uh, a little too heavy on the foreshadowing, I think. Um, definitely could have pulled back on that, but ultimately it doesn't it doesn't really take anything away from the story, um, and it is meant for kids. Yeah. So um, you know we've got a really a really great well rounded uh, cast. The, um, just even, even from the way they're designed, it's well-rounded. You have multiple body types, um, you have lots of varying personalities, so as a cast, they work well together, and you don't feel like anyone's left out. Yeah, because I was going to say, going back to the story real quick, because this will kind of slot into that. For a movie that's about, like, an hour and 35 to 38 minutes long, they did a pretty good job of of getting you enough of each character to know who they are. I mean, obviously, this is, like, a superhero movie, so their superhero aspects, you know, the visual aspects may get more inclined to their personality, but... I, I like I liked a lot of the um a lot of the different characters in this one. I loved Wasabi. He was so cute, and Baymax is yes. my favorite. Baymax makes this movie because <laughs> he's so adorable. Because he's so adorable and squishy. And if we go back to huh? Said yeah, ba la la la. I love Baymax. He's so squishy. Going back to he Klaus, is. the reason I love Margu is because she's a tiny little cotton that I want to hug, and Baymax <laughs> is a big marshmallow I want to hug. Is there a tiny news around? Yes. He squicks, 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 and when he like falls over, his little legs go. <laughs> and I was like, Baymax, mm-hmm. stop! You're so cute. I love you. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this movie is the the different ways that they humanized Baymax, even though he's very much not a human. Yeah, he has a pop. Um, oh, he's expensive. Is he a big one? <laughs> so you know he the the battery scene where he's basically drunk because he's low battery. I love that. That was so great. I, I love when it kids is. movies use drunk in different ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because he's not actually drunk. He's just really low on power. <laughs> yes, which I mean to be fair, that's kind of what happens when you're drunk. Harry baby. Harry baby. Harry baby. Came, I remember when this movie came out, that became a meme. Harry baby. <laughs> He was like, what the fuck, Harry Baby? And I was like, now I get it. It's because he was basically <laughs> drunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, oh, um, 
Um, do you have anything you want to say on the uh, character designs themselves, or um, are they... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can. I've always got something to say on the visual aspects of movies. Um, yeah. Yeah, the character designs in this movie, I was kind of looking on the timeline of when this came out in, like, regards to the 3D Disney movies, because, I mean, people will learn very quickly that I'm accepting a Pixar to a point, but I've been very critical on the 3D Disney movies, like the in-house ones, because of how Disney's stance on why they don't do 2D movies anymore, but I'm not I'm not going to get into that. I talked a little bit about it in the Klaus episode, and I'm not going to get into it on this one. The only time I'll probably get in on it is when we talk, if we ever do m reviews on movies I've ever seen, like Meet the Robinsons or Chicken Little or something like that, if we want to do a retrospective because then I can really talk about why I don't particularly like the animated, the 3D Disney movies. But yeah, this one, this one came out after Frozen. And um, so the, 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 the two, prim the, the three primary 3D movies that came out prior were Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, and Tangled. And I really liked Tangled. And I haven't, I haven't seen Wreck-It Ralph, but I really liked Tangled, and I haven't seen Frozen. So my only, um, my only reference with that really kind of like, kind of human style Disney 3D design is from Tangled. So a lot of the character designs in this movie remind me a lot of how the ones in Tangled are. And it's that Disney style try to tra um, kind of put into into um, 3D. I, I hope this makes sense to people. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to explain it, but if you're not a Disney person, it's going to be really difficult for you to understand what I'm saying. But the character designs, for the most part, are fine. I like a lot of their superhero costumes, beside, except Wasabi's. I love Wasabi so much, but I don't understand why he's got, like, big chic genie pants on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, why is he wearing those? Why didn't he get, like, some cool, like, some cool, like, green gr greaves or something on? Why is he wearing those? And um, everyone's designs are pretty... A lot, a lot, everyone's designs are pretty unique, but there's a lot of just similarities in like how the ladies are. It's just all curves. They're all sl they're all very slender. They're all like very curved and things like that. There's no like real. Um, I mean, except with Honey Lennon, she's very tall and she's very mm -hmm. like perky. I, and everyone kind of has their own stereotype. Like Go Go is kind of like. She's the, like, I'm the badass that takes no names. And then Wasabi is very, like, neat and orderly and tidy. Um, Honey Lemon is very, like, spontaneous and energetic. Fred is the kind of... Fred is the stoner kid. And Hero is your... Hero's your basic, like, I'm too smart for my own good. Tadashi's mm -hmm. big brother. So, yeah, like, the character designs are fine, but they reek of that... Of that, early, of that early 2010s um, Disney, we're still trying to figure out our style. And I think this was kind of the movie where they really got into it. Because I know Wreck-It yeah. Ralph looks really good, but Zootopia came out after this movie. And they put two years, this movie came out, Zootopia came out two years after this movie. And Zootopia looks amazing. That yeah. nudie looks amazing because this movie still has some issues with it that um, we can get to if we when we want to talk about more of the art direction. Yeah, yeah, character designs are fine. I know a lot of people like cosplaying these characters, which is good. You know, I always enjoy when cosplayers can have stuff to do, but they're nothing to write home about. There's no big, amazing reveal. Oh, the two guys. I just remembered this. The two, the two older men, Callahan and Cray. I hate their designs. <laughs> they look fucking so, horrible. <laughs> yes, they're ugly as all get out, and they're weirdly similar. Um, I remember the first time I watched, and granted, I was doing ad set at work while I watched it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it, it was. It was one of those, like, I wasn't fully paying attention, but I could not keep track of which one was which. Yeah, I, as soon as I saw both those characters, I was like, oh no, because this, 
Pixar has a really good way of lighting characters that have really, like, exaggerated features. Disney has still not figured out how to do that. <laughs> and the yeah. lighting on these two characters is, like, really, really... There's, like, there's one point in the fight scene, at the very ending scene, where Cray is looking around and he's really shiny. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> he looks really <laughs> rubbery. <laughs> like, I'm just like, Ew. He really does. <laughs> I'm not going to hate on the lighting crew for that because the lighting in this movie is actually really good. But just those two characters in particular look very ugly. They're very mm -hmm. ugly designs and it's really unfortunate. Like Callahan's design is not as bad, but Craze is awful. <laughs> He's an ugly looking character and I'm so sorry to the to the character designer. This isn't a slight on you, but God, he's an ugly character. He needed a little more. Yeah. He needed another day in the pot. He needed another little. You needed to erase some lines on him and put some new ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. God, that's an ugly character. I know he's not in the movie that much, but still, I mean, I'm going to have to go back to Klaus for a minute. Dad is in the movie for four minutes, and he had 20 different versions of him before they came to the one they wanted. So yeah. sometimes there are characters that need that much revision for you, them to get right. And this was one of those characters that really needed another day or two on the table to get right. <laughs> because you could have made him look interesting, but he's just... He's just handsome, big-faced blonde guy, and I was like, oh, okay, you're a corporate guy in every other movie I've ever seen. There's nothing interesting about you. Yeah, I will say, just kind of looking looking it up, um, because since we're not familiar with the source material... No. Um, they did stick true to the source material on both of those guys. Oh, they did? Um, from what I can see. Oh, send yeah. me the picture because it'll be quicker. <laughs> okay, yeah, me looking me... it up. That can't be how he looks in the comic book because the comic book's more of like a 90s Jim Lee like manga style. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Where did it go? <laughs> I, just, I had just... already back clicked. Okay, it... Oh no, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, where did it go? I don't really have anything else to say on the character designs because they're just, they just, eh. They're pretty normal. I mean, Baymax is very cute. His his armor design is really good. I love the big red armor. Like, that's kind of the thing. That's kind of one of the things that made me want to watch the movie because it's like, oh, he actually looks pretty cool. And I love, I love some of the, just some of the weirdness <laughs> with how yeah. everyone else works. Like, they kind of took their, their little, like, they did, they just took, like, what they were good at and turned it into something. Like, Honey Lemon can do, like, like, little balls that have, like, chemical reactions and, and, um, this is what the original comic looks like? Are you sure? <laughs> That, that's what I'm trying... I was going to say, that looks like fan art to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's whatever. It's, it's, I'm not going to sit here and waste waste like 20 yeah. minutes trying to find this. Yeah, no, it, it, that's what he looks like in the comic book. You could have at least tried to do something, because there's no way in hell that's what he would have looked like. Manga styles yeah. do not do large, exaggerated noses. That's very much a Western thing. And it's a Western cartoon thing, not a Western comic book thing. So yeah. that that comic is already very manga-inspired, and it's 90s edge, so he wouldn't have a nose that big. <laughs> it's mostly, yeah. like, Westernized animated movies, like European movies that do that kind of style. So... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, those two designs didn't particularly like. Callahan is a little more tolerable. Cray just looks really bad. And again, it's not a slight to any of the people, any of the care, any of the designers. It's just, it's just not a solid design in terms of what I would have done for that character. So yeah. So moving on. It, um, it definitely makes you dislike the character, but that shouldn't be the only thing going yeah. into a design. Yeah, I mean, he's um, not really much so... of a character to begin with, so yeah. there's not really much else you can hate, so... <laughs> so in terms of the actual acting, um, 
the this is not a hugely known cast, especially not in twenty fourteen. Um, T.J. Miller has become much more known um, since then because he he went on to be in Deadpool. Um, he voiced Fred. He was absolutely perfect in that role. Uh, Jamie Chung was Go Go. I love her as an actor. Um, she was in uh, Eden before this, which is a very, very dark movie, which she did wonderfully in. Um, and she's been in, like, Once Upon a Time, Gotham, things like that. So I was really surprised to realize that she was um, Go-Go in this film. Um... Because she just, she hadn't really done voice acting before this. But she kind of exploded after the film. Um, Wasabi, we it, don't recognize the actor. He did, you know, solidly. Um, he didn't have as much to do. He was kind of the voice of reason. He's still a really um, cute character. He's probably my favorite out of the group. <laughs> Just because yeah. of how cute and cautious he is. He's like, no, everything everything has its place. And, you know, we got to stop on the red light. It's red. It's the law. And he's, like, indicating while they're being chased. It's like, oh, you poor boy. You're so precious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely OCD to the extreme. I know. He's so cute. Um, <laughs> and then Honey Lemon. So... The first time I watched this, I really expected the voice actress to be Lisa Kudrow. Not because it sounded like her, but because if this were live action, they would have cast her. Yeah, I don't I don't know who I recognize Genesis um Rodriguez, but I don't know what she's been in. Yeah, she let's see. I loved her it, pronunciation of things though. Yes. Because she would be doing like really peppy, like really perky, like valley girl. And then her, her, she would be like, hero. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so pretty. Mm -hmm. I like how you said his name. And you rolled your R. <laughs> yeah. So she, she started off in, uh, telenovelas. Oh, okay. So she's a native, um, Spanish speaker then. Yeah, that makes yeah. more sense. So, That's why her voice was so interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she was born in Miami and was the daughter of a Venezuelan and a Cuban. Um, so, you know, she she very much is a child of two languages. Yeah. Possibly even three. So I think Venezuela and Cuba have different different spanish yeah they just have different dialects it's still spanish they just have different inflection it's the difference between american english and english english they just yeah. say it differently in different um, intonation yes <laughs> that funny yes. word yes um i loved ryan potter's hero he did a really wonderful job with that there wasn't really any moment where it felt dis you know disgenuine um Scott adds it with Baymax, just solid 100% give me more. No, no, he's so cute. <laughs> so good, so cute. Um, I am going to be honest, I did not like a lot of uh, Callahan's acting. But it's um, Jay I just remembered who James Cromwell was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what what do you know him from? He it's James Cromwell. Oh well fuck what movie? he's the he's in a shit ton of like movies. He's in Elliot Confidential, Green Mile, he's the oh, Farmer he's the and babe. babe guy. Yeah, he's in a crap ton of he's like he's huh. he's in a ton of movies. And just sort of okay. who he was it's like that's why I recognize his voice. Yeah, I mean, I love just... I love James Cromwell. I mean, I didn't really particularly like Callahan because again, he's not much of a character. But it's I, yeah, I was like, oh no, I have to like his voice now <laughs> because I just enjoy James Cromwell. <laughs> so I think there's there's something that um, 
One of the reasons that you used to never see film actors go into voice acting is that um, a lot of the time, you know, back in the past, there there wasn't much for the voice actors to work off of. Um, and so film actors would end up not doing a good portrayal because they had less to work with than they were used to. And yeah, and I feel like that's that's the issue with Callahan for me. Um, Cray was voiced by Alan Tudyuk. He, uh, he did a wonderful job, as always. He had very little to work with, but literally you can put Alan Tudyuk in a room with two, you know, figurines, and he'll give you a masterpiece, as evidenced by Firefly. I mean, as evidenced by Dodgeball, <laughs> he is, what, Pirate Greg, or whatever the heck his name is? He just goes, yar, the whole movie. Is that yeah. Dodgeball that he considers the pirate? <laughs> I think so. I I did not know that it was Alan Tudyk. I couldn't hear that it was him, so... I didn't know yeah. he was in it until the the it, yeah Steve the pirate yeah Steve the pirate and dodgeball yar okay <laughs> yeah but he he does a wonderful job as always of hiding who he is yeah um he's always and portraying solid. the character to the best of his ability and its writing yeah so voice acting overall is 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 strong. The only real critique I have is just I don't think they gave James Cromwell enough to work with for Callahan. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of scenes where he came through really strong for me, um, but most of his scenes were really weak. I'm not even imparting on the writing as well, because I think of the few reviews I've seen of this movie, a lot of people say that the big reveal, villain reveal is the weakest part of the movie. Like, it's a really fun, and like, action movie, and then you find out who the villain is, and they're like, oh, who didn't see that coming? And they right. just didn't think he was that good of a character, and he's not. The, the, two, the two older male characters in this movie are not very good characters. Like, the kids... Like, the two, the two, like, the best character, to be honest, is Tadashi, and then he just dies. And, and he's I was, dead. I was like, come yeah. on, he's such a good, he's so fleshed out, and he's so well-rounded, and they just murder him. And I was like, well, all right then. <laughs> I'll just yeah. have Baymax for 90 minutes, I'm all right with that. <laughs> right. And this is a cute little marshmallow feet squishing around everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, um... In terms of production design, um, that is where most of this movie's awards and nominations uh, came from. Yeah, um, yeah I can see that. It, it has you know great lighting, as we already said. The camera direction is way stronger than normal. Um, they they did a good job of that. Um, the coloring was was i'd say pretty good it was dynamic it was very action superhero film um but they also they had to draw from the original comics for most of their coloring so i'm not surprised that it was sound um the foley work in this sh in this movie was amazing i loved the sounds mm -hmm. yeah the sounds on this movie were really good I mean, it's an action movie, though, so it's a lot more, like, heightened. It's more punchy, um, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, but, but even even the softer noises, um, like, that happened in the house yeah. and with him, like, uh, it, it, the rolly chair scene where he's, like, going between all the different workstations, those are very small noises that often get overlooked, and they didn't in this movie, and I loved it. The Disney, the Disney three, Disney when they they transitioned to their three D nudies because Pixar always had really good foley. They kind of upped their game because a lot of their animated movies don't really have a lot of like n like good solid foley work. Like it's very like blunt mm -hmm. and obvious. And I mean, I guess that's fine, but again, I'm going to have to go back to Klaus. Even in 2D animated movies, your Foley work can really make or break the immersion. Because in that nudie, the Foley is so subtle, you don't notice it. 
Mm-hmm. And you're just, you just you yeah. hear the sound, but it's like you don't notice it, but your brain did. <laughs> yep. And then music wise, it so we could do an entire video essay on music and films. Um, the music's fine. The, yeah, the music's fine. If you're really interested in, you know, um, non-musical film music, I'm going to point you to 60 Frames of Painting again. Um, mm-hmm. He did a really great video essay yeah. on why so many movies sound alike. Um, the only thing that I would recognize from the this movie's entire score is... Um, the uh the music that's playing when they realize like they have their their origin story montage yeah it's the only only thing i recognize from this film that's it's that's intersected pop song that's what every animated movie has but the because i watched this last night the 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 actual music, the music, I know the pop song was probably made for the movie, but the actual film score is pretty solid. It, it, you, it's, it, the difference between noticing and not noticing it, you do notice it in this movie because it's very loud and very bombastic, like, kind of like how Into the spider Verses um score yeah, is but it's just it, not memorable yeah i mean it, yeah but it's fine it works it helps set the mood it helps set the scene and i did like that kind of towards the end when they're in kind of the alternate dimension there are some scenes that don't have any sound and i really mm-hmm. wish a lot of a lot of people would learn about the 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 sound of silence <laughs> mm-hmm. because you can do some really impactful scenes in animated movies with the sound of silence <laughs> hello darkness my old friend because, I mean, I know everyone hates The Last Jedi, but there is that one scene in The Last Jedi where, um, where Ryan Duh. Johnson is like, I'm going to use no sound. And everyone's like, eh, yeah. movie broken. I was like, no, movie not broken. You dumb. It's called silence. It's important. Yeah. Watch Samurai Jack. Gindy <laughs> <laughs> Tartakovsky understand. His new show, Primal, or whatever the heck it's called, has no voice acting in it. No talking, no dialogue. Huh. And I really want to watch it because I just found out about it. I was like, holy crap, you mean it's all the good scenes of Samurai Jack, but just an entire show? <laughs> I'm down. And it's, it's on Adult Swim, so it's really violent. And like, really like, blood. it's like really violent and really like, grounded. And it's like, this is a hellscape huh. where a man fights dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> that's awesome. I know. I really want to have to watch that one. I really, I think it's a mini series, so I don't think like there's going to be any more of it. But I think it's already out. So I think it's called Primal. <laughs> I can't remember. I mean, he just like a yeah, it's called Primal. Yeah, I mean, ten he, episodes. Yeah, I think that's all it's going to be because I think it was just a mini series. Because I think the last season of Samurai Jack did so well that Adult Swim's like, dude, DreamWorks is wasting you. Make more shows. And he's like, I can't make my Popeye movie. Might as well make a show about Violet Caveman. <laughs> so it doesn't show that it's guaranteed for another season, but it's not showing that it's a limited release. Okay, I couldn't so, I couldn't remember if it was either a mini series or it just had one season. Yeah, but we'll we'll tack that on to our to do list as well. To the, list, the list of things that we cannot guarantee that we will get to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, if there's demand for things, we'll obviously get to them, but, um, yeah. well, this one, but otherwise, this nudie's on yeah. my list of 50 movies I haven't seen that I'm watching. So, but I mean, we're, we're yeah. open to watching movies we've already seen, but yep. if we had so... to, if we had to get into one thing about like design the one thing so the biggest difference between the reason i'm so critical on these movies as opposed to the pixar ones is because disney refuses to do realistic backgrounds in their 3d movies and it makes most of the environments look very ugly unless they unless they have really good lighting attached to them and that was the yeah. biggest issue I had with Chicken Little. The biggest issue I had with Meet the Robinsons is the biggest issue I had with Untangled. And this movie, 
seems to have this movie seems to have figured out kind of that happy medium that i saw realized in zootopia and why i like zootopia mm-hmm. so much because in zootopia it's very i mean it's all like animals and stuff so it's a very cartoonish world to begin with but when they go to like um when they go to the jungle sector a lot of the lighting and a lot of the atmosphere and a lot of the texture work and a lot of the environment looks really solid. And in this yeah. movie, there are certain aspects of San Francisco or San Francisco or whatever the heck it's called, the town, yeah. the city that look kind of eh. But then during like the flying scene when they give Baymax his like his red armor and during like a few of the other scenes, like the the, the environment work is starting to look really good. And yeah. I know a lot of people would be like, but that's just how Disney wants to do it. I was like, yeah, but the problem is, is when you go from, when you go from 2D to 3D, there are certain things that have to change in order to make your 3D movie look more believable. And Pixar realized that it was the environments. They realized yeah. that they needed their texture work, their environments, their lighting, the, you know, their particle effects. They needed all of that mm-hmm. to look, look re- realistic so their characters could have this really beautiful environment to be put into. It's like when you're playing a video right. game and your character is like really cartoonish, but the environment is really like lush and vibrant and, you know, like it just really well done. And this movie, this movie, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the designs, a lot of the environments were starting to go that way. And I think, yeah. well, let me look at, let me look at the list of animated so, movies. So just kind of to bring it, to bring it home, if you were to sit someone down who didn't keep track of when movies came out, maybe hadn't even watched animated films, you sat them down and you had them watch Brave from 2012, mm-hmm. which is a Pixar film, mm-hmm. and then had them watch this, and asked them which one came out first, they would say that Big Hero 6 came out yeah, first. Yeah, they would say, yeah, because... It mostly shines in the night scenes because it's easy to light a day scene and make it good because you can mm-hmm. cheat with your shadows. But a lot of the night scenes are still a little rough when it comes to actually having really good lighting. But Brave, despite how chunky that movie is like halfway through it it's still a really good looking movie and but that's because pixar yeah. always tries to do their best and they've in pixar in order to not make their characters look shiny <laughs> they do very soft lighting on their characters so their characters look very smooth they look like they look like this they look like the firm side of a peach <laughs> Yes. They're very smooth and very marshmallowy looking. They're not shiny. And Disney still cannot figure out how to light their characters to where they look good. <laughs> mm-hmm. They still look a bit rough, except in Zootopia. But in Zootopia, they could cheat because all the characters have fur. So you're just working with fur texture. So yeah. I'm interested. I'm very curious. I'm, I'm not in the mood to watch Wreck-It Ralph or Frozen anytime soon. But I'm really curious because the next Moody I will probably do do is Moana but I'm gonna do another my next 50 is gonna be a live action movie and then I will probably do Moana because I'm really curious to see how Mo- how the difference between this movie and Moana is because that's a two-year gap yeah and it's it's a pretty it's a pretty big difference yeah I'm really really curious to see because what I've seen from Moana it looks really good and yeah. and I'm yeah that one I'm kind of excited for and then I will I will get to Wreck It Ralph and Frozen and people are like hey dude why don't you want to watch Wreck It Ralph and Frozen because Frozen has a terrible story and Wreck It Ralph's villain is really annoying I know the story of both of those movies and I had no interest in watching them but I'm going to have to because I haven't seen them <laughs> yeah we won't be doing Wreck It Ralph um together. That'll have to just be one of your essays. Um, you know it's Rick and Ralph. I'm a Rick. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that outside of the podcast. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's fine. I mean, I don't. I, 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 I'm, but, if anyone's wondering, no, I'm not planning to do all fifty of my movies 
in this form. It's just anytime I tell Xander, like, hey, I'm going to watch this movie. Do you want to talk about it? He will say yes or no. Because the second movie I did, we can't talk about until it comes out on home video anyway. So I will probably just watch Wreck-It Ralph on my own, groan at it, and then make a thing about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Moana, I'm definitely down for super, super good. Yeah. Yeah, what about Frozen? <laughs> Um, Frozen, I can I can definitely do with uh, do with that. <laughs> I would like to I would like to do Frozen and Frozen Two together. Yeah, we'll have to wait for it to come um, out on home video then, so that'll be later in yeah. the year. Because Frozen Two, I think, is still in theaters at the moment. Yeah, I think so. But Aladdin is already on Disney Plus, so. That says on how quickly they're going to be pushing things to plus. Because yeah. they don't have to do it on Netflix anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, I guess I guess in closing, I don't really have anything else to say about this movie production-wise. Lighting solid. You know, it, it loses some atmosphere in some places. You know, this movie is kind of a a good a good waypoint between how really the good the good animation like the good environment animation in Zootopia and how bad it was in Tangled it wasn't bad but still eh. it's not what it yeah. should be in a 3D movie I really don't like cartoony environments in 3D movies they really bother me <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why. Like, I've never been able to figure out why. Like, they don't bother me in 2D settings, but in 3D settings, I'm like, why Why did that look that way? <laughs> why did that yeah. look that way? <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, yeah. Um... It's, it's a, it's a well-rounded movie. Yeah. It's, um... Mm. Compared to, to other things that came out in 2014... Um, it's definitely near the top so far as animation goes, which is why it has so many nominations mm. and wins. Um, but yeah, it animation has definitely come a long way. Yeah, since the Lego Movie came out is that same year, I believe. Yeah, and Lego Movie yeah. is uh, 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 is a <laughs> masterpiece in is a masterpiece in tricking the brain. In Lego Movie is, oh, I want to talk about that movie, but not not now. I really want to see the second one, and then we can talk about Lego Movie. We can do those two together as well. Okay. And then there's cool. Lego Batman. Dang it! You're too many Lego movies. Lego. Yeah, again, right. I, I would say if you hadn't seen this movie, I mean, if you haven't already seen it, you probably aren't going to want to watch it. But if it's just one of those movies you forgot came out, and you're an animation buff. I would give it a watch because there is a lot in there. There is some things that you can kind of look at and learn, like the particle engine, like the, the however they generated the microbots. That's very interesting. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know how they animated that. I want to know if that's just a particle, if that's just like controlled particles or if it's just um like... Like, I can't explain it, but if it's like objects added to a layered like to an object like a small objects added to a bigger object just to make the illusion of like multiple particles. But I really like that was the the one aspect of this movie I really liked is that 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 was a really cool thing to look at. <laughs> yeah, and most of the nominations are for effects, and I think it's because of the microbots. Yeah, that's fair. I can I can I can get on with that. Yeah, and yeah. I like the I like the kind of like the weird like kind of like Asian setting of the city, but it's it's so generic that there isn't much to talk about it. It's like we have paper lamps and 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 China and all. It's a mix of like every Asian culture. It's not like just Japan or China. Like there's a lot of like there's mm -hmm. a lot of like um Korean things in there. So it's a weird mishmash of a lot of stuff, but it's still. Most of the characters are white. <laughs> it's like, like you have two, you have two Asian characters, and then you just have no, you have, no, actually no, yeah, because Gogo -Go is Asian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Gogo -Go is Asian. Um, Wasabi is black. It, it there's it's, only it's a fairly healthy, two... it's a fairly healthy cast. Yeah. yeah, so I'll give it that. I'll I'll get it. I'll give it a check mark for that. Like I'm glad that it's it has a fairly diverse cast, but I think the comic book does anyway, which is good, and gets really good yeah. for the '90s because the '90s everyone was white bread. They were either white or Asian. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> it's really and, unfortunate uh, for I the like, comic books. <laughs> yeah, and I like that from the start, um, the women characters are really strong. Yeah. Um, and they're they're independent as well. Like I would watch a movie about just Gogo. Yeah, I would watch I... a movie about just Honey. Gogo is certainly my favorite in terms of like design and with the um, the mm -hmm. main kids because I really like her um I really like her suit and her ability because she uses like the magnetic wheels from her bike yeah so she's she's really she's a really she was really fun to watch I liked her she was so yeah I yeah like I said if you haven't already watched this I mean it is on Disney Plus so you can watch it on Disney Plus um I mean everyone probably has Disney Plus at the moment because of Mando. <laughs> so you can just sneak on over into the, the animated section and just go give it a watch it's, it's an hour and a half give or take it goes by pretty quickly it's not slow at any point so you, you won't notice the time it is pretty healthy pacing so yeah and so yeah so closing thoughts yeah go watch it I would give this movie maybe a 7 I mean, it's nothing to write home yeah. about. It's fairly, like, it's a it's a fairly d decent, like, 3D animated movie. I saw some gripes with it, but it, t on a technical level, yeah, during the time, it did some stuff that was pretty revolutionary, but, I mean, Frozen was doing some pretty good stuff as well, and, Z but Zootopia, for me, would be, a, would be like, a 9. So I'm going to get this yeah. kind of in the middle between, like, Frozen, I'd give a five because it has a crappy story, but I haven't seen it yet. This is a set in. I'll give Zootopia <laughs> a nine. People are going to be okay, so mad so... at me for hating on Frozen. <laughs> having, having seen all three, um, Frozen... As an overall, I give a three. Oh wow! Um, oh, see, I give it a five because the because yeah. the they had to build a completely new engine to make the snow physics look good in that movie. <laughs> so I give it. So I give story, it a five on technicality, <laughs> on technical. The story, <laughs> the story is so bad, okay, that I checked out enough and long enough that I didn't realize the parents died. <laughs> I was just like, where the fuck are the parents? <laughs> Okay, okay now like, we definitely had to do this movie. We de <laughs> it, uh, it was so... Oh, that's hilarious. Like, I loved the music, and that's why I finished it, but I didn't realize how much I had checked out until oh. I t was talking to someone later, and I was like, so why did the parents just disappear? And they were like, Sander, they died. <laughs> there was a whole scene about it. There were like two scenes. What are you talking about? Your brain has a weird habit of blocking out things. Like you forgot the postman rap in Klaus. <laughs> Your yeah. brain is like, no, I don't remember that. That didn't happen. I was like, oh, I guess things, it did. Things that are handled poorly or things that my brain just doesn't want to exist, it'll just be like, nope, that goes into the locked compartment. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm not gonna let you forget that scene in Klaus though, because it's great. Uh, You're not gonna forget. It. I'm gonna just constantly play it. <laughs> <laughs> I also forgot who the Half Blood Prince was like six times, despite reading the book multiple times. I just kept like blocking it out. Okay, we're going off it, on a tangent. People but, people yeah. just just watch the movie. It's decent enough. Your kids will enjoy it. Your kids will probably be able to keep up with it. Yeah, so give it a watch. It's on Disney Plus and and yeah, I don't really have anything else to add. Neither do I. So I guess I could just do the the obligatory plugs. So for mm -hmm. me, for KT, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me anywhere you put in Conira Thax, you will find me. Um, I'm primarily on Instagram. I'm primarily on YouTube. I just opened a Gumroad store, which you can find at gumroad.com slash So I have a lot of original art on there, a lot of original prints. You know, it's all home print. All the art cards are home cut. So it's all from me to you. There's no middleman except the postman. <laughs> And for JPS stuff, again, you can find us pretty much anywhere. Our primary is 
Patreon, and we are slowly working on the Instagram. Like as this comes out, there should be stuff on there now, but that's going to be yeah. more for like visual things. And you know, we do have a Facebook, but that's more for updates. So the two best ones are going to be Instagram and Patreon. And for Xander, if you want to follow him, you can find him on Instagram at was it Xander Frey? <laughs> yeah, Xander Frey. Yeah, he doesn't really post that much, but I mean, I might be able to, <laughs> I might be able to get him to post more. <laughs> I'm trying. He's an I old just... man who doesn't understand the internet. <laughs> I understand the internet. I just don't like taking pictures of myself. You know, what? I never post pictures my of myself. You know, no, I, but you you create like art and you post that and you it. So I've just got to find the things that I want to share. Like it's probably just gonna become my cats, to be honest. Just do that. That's fine. Just post your fur babies. You got plenty of them. <laughs> I do. And you got other people's fur babies. <laughs> Yeah. Just post about your kid. Hey, I follow like four pages that are just about cats. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, yeah. And and when when I do like productions, like when I film the script that I'm working on right now, I'll have production photos that I add. Yeah. It's just you know I I struggle with what the hell do I post in the in between? Pictures of cats. There we go. That's all you're going to post. You're going you're gonna to get to be very familiar with Willow and Lemur, my babies, if you follow me on Instagram. Yeah, there you go. So, alrighty, yeah, and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you all for joining us for this episode, and we will see you in the next one.